When you have a perfectly lit green screen, it's as easy as drag and drop. Welcome back to the Filmmaker's Formula, where I give you the shortcuts to creative filmmaking. I'm Kevin. Today I wanted to talk about lighting green screens. If you have keyed out a green screen before, you'll know how hard it is to key out a poorly lit green screen. Not only do you get those fuzzy edges on your subject, sometimes parts of it will just decide to become transparent. You could drop 20 effects on your source footage to key out all the different shades of green, but then you'll have to deal with your computer being on fire while it's rendering. I don't want to touch it! Dude, what are you doing? Oh, holy f dude, 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 dude. Oh my god. And like I always say, the best time to fix something is during the shoot. So let me show you how I light a green screen. So you'll never have to deal with flickery footage or that shadow under the armpit on the green screen that is like the toughest thing to get out ever again. Step one, green screen. You'll need a proper green screen. And when I say proper, I don't mean an expensive green screen. You'll need a green screen that's as neon green as you can get it. Some of the green screens off of Amazon have cloth that's way too thin, like you can see yourself behind it. Preferably, you want your green screen to be solid, smooth, and not super shiny. Kinda like this monster energy drink. The perfect substitute to sleep. Now if you're on a budget, I've found that the green posters at the dollar store works really well. Actually, they work better than some of the green screens I've tried. I did make a video on it that you should check out. Step number two. Now in a moment here, I'm gonna talk about a specific tool you'll be needing. But step two is lights. There's a bunch of different lights that you can get. Depending on the size of your green screen, you'll need as many lights as you can get your hands on. There's usually two colors in lights. There's tungsten and there's daylight. Or to simplify, blue and orange. Whatever you decide to get, just keep it consistent. Easiest thing to do is to get some soft boxes off of Amazon. Don't worry about positioning or even lighting. We'll talk about that next. Step number three. I like to again emphasize the importance of hitting the like button. It's just that button that has a thumb down there. If you can hit it, I promise you it'll help you out with your green screen. All right, step four. Now we're getting to the meat of it. Uh, we're gonna talk about how to light your green screen evenly. Probably one of the hardest but most important things to do to make sure your editor isn't just keying out little bits of green everywhere. Mainly the reason it's hard because we can't really see hotspots. Well, I can't, I'm hotspot blind. When you're just looking at one solid color, it always just looks even. But when you bring it in post, you get these uneven spots where you shine your lights on. So the tool that you'll need to make your life easier is a monitor with false color. False color, in short, assigns a different color to each area with different exposure in your image from your camera. And that last part is important because exposure is the amount of light collected by your camera in its specific settings. So I can't just turn on the monitor with false color and then shoot the whole scene using my iPhone. Of course, you'll wanna check for any glaring shadows or things in your frame first, but after that, you could use false color to perfectly tune the color of the <laughs> green behind you. Got it. Just play with the placements of your lights until on the monitor you get a solid color, then you're pretty much ready to go. Record your segment on your green screen, drop your footage into the editing program of your drop a keying effect on it. My two favorite ones are color key and key light. And with some luck, you'll get a perfect key. Now people won't be able to tell where you are most of the time because you know the secrets of lighting a perfectly lit green screen. Which I'm kind of glad I finally figured out because I sure could have used these tips back when I shot that other video on green screens.